everybody, this is Marjorie. <laughs> look at me today. I'm like an epileptic fit. <laughs> it's beautiful, isn't it? All the lovely colours. I mean, you wouldn't miss me in Tesco, that's for sure. <laughs> she in, link down below. Now, I was going to tell you the day about my, well, I've got a camping story, right? But before I tell you that, I'm exhausted, right? Because, well, I've been running about the house. I've been running about the house like a blue eye banjo after a wee pansy potter. Well, I'm looking after for my for my hairdresser, Kyla Marie Antoinette. So, wee pansy potter decides she wants to play hide and seek. So she's here, there and everywhere. And I'm, I mean, I'm a woman, woman at a certain age and I'm running about the house <laughs> try to look for wee pansy potter because she wanted to play hide and seek. <laughs> I think she thinks she's Boris Becker. Well, what a, what a stramash, eh? Boris Becker. After a, an aluminum in this... An aluminum in his career, can't I mean? And he's going to jail. Oh no, and then there was all this stuff with Boris. Well, the, the stories never end with other Boris, do they? Or the number 10 parties. Now, they say, they say these things come in three. I bet Boris Yeltsin's glad he's dead, because, I mean, he would be next. I mean, what, what would he be up to? You know? <laughs> oh, anyway, so I was going to tell you, right? Wait, wait till you hear this classic. Bad boy. Two doors down. He decides he's going camping. I mean, the I mean nothing. I mean nothing comes further, further to and from my mind. Further to and from. Yes, you know, from, from my mind. Then fat boy going camping. Now he opens his front door the other day, right, and he appears. And now he's got one of these. You know, the, you see them in the London Marathon on the BBC. They've got the the silver foil blankets wrapped around them, right. So he's got one of these, and he comes out, and he's, um, he says, he shouts up, I'm trying this on for size, darling. So he's walking towards me, right, and I'm, I'm looking at him as if, what about you, You're supposed to be some for Doctor Who? And he says, did you think it was your knight in shining armour, darling? I says, no, I thought it was, I thought it was a Teletubby wrapped up in tinfoil, to be honest. I says, wait, what on earth are you doing? He says, I'm getting all my stuff together, darling, because I am going camping. I went, you're going camping? What possessed you to go camping? He says, well, darling, I was watching a film the other night, and it inspired me to get out my camping gear and go camping again. And I says, what film were you watching? What did he tell me? It was a mountain, it was about a mountain. Cold Mountain, no, wasn't it Cold Mountain? That's Nicole Kidman, Cold, or is that Cold, Big Mountain, Cold Mountain, Chilly Mountain? What was it called? The two guys, Bareback Mountain, right? So he'd been watching that, and all of a sudden he thought, right, uh, he wanted to go camping. And I says, oh, that, you want to go camping on, on a Bareback Mountain? I says, I, he says, I used to go wee when I was in the Cubs, and I went, don't tell me any more stories about you when you were wee in the Cubs in the Bareback Mountain. I says, that's how that's how stories get misconstrued, right? And then you get yourself in all these sorts of trouble. Anyway, so he says, I've got all the gear, darling, and I'm ready to go. Now, you should have seen him. <laughs> I think he thought he was Bear Grylls. Oh, he was as happy as an MP watching a porno. So, I says, what size of tent have you got? What size of, it must be like a big marquee, like the years at the wedding receptions. Keep a hoard of that because that might come in useful for, you know, Fanny, my, my pal for number 89, her and Felix Farts for Vianetta and Austria. That might come in handy for their wedding, so keep a hoard of your tent. That could actually be the, the reception tent behind the Bowling Green. Oh, no, no, the Bowling Green. Scouts Hall. Where did I get the Bowling Green for? I'm, I'm making this up as I go along. <laughs> anyway, so I says, what do you do for food? And, you know, have you got a stove? Because, I mean, there'll no be, there'll no be supermarkets in the middle of the winter. You can't just pop to Aldi's and get a pan of chocolate. He says, no, darling, I've got all my supplies and I've got a little stove. So, I nipped into the house and I says, right, I didn't know when he sent my way empty haunted, so I nipped into the house, I ran back out and I says, here you go, here's a, a couple of things to add to your, your supplies. And I gave him a wee... A wee, you know, packet of Rye Vita. I says, well, that'll no do you any harem. Packet of Rye Vita, and I gave him a big bag of um, placenta. Because that's easy, isn't it? You just put that in the pot with some water and you heat it up. It's a wee bit like porridge. I says, oh, that'll be lovely. So, away he went, happy as Larry, and he's got his 
is right, Vita and his big baggy placenta and all his supplies, and off he goes. <laughs> he was like some fraggle rock. He could hardly walk. He was he was waddling away to the motor. <laughs> well, it's calm gear. And then it reminded me, right? He told me this years ago, right? Before his wife won the lottery and ran away, him and his wife and his daughter, they all went to Canada on holiday, right? Now, they went to the woods. They went to this big, what do you call the bear? The bear woods. No, the bear woods. The woods weren't a bear, because if they were bear, there wouldn't be woods, because there would be trees, and if there wasn't any trees, there wouldn't be woods. Where's that story going? Anyway, they're in Canada. Meow. So, they're, they're staying in these woods, right? And they've got their tent up and daddy, daddy, da. So, one morning, right, Mrs. Fat Boy, Mrs. Fat Boy gets up and, right, she's seen that, that we, that we Fat Boy, well, she was a lassie, I can't even mind her name, but, you know, the wee woman. So, Mrs. Fat Boy was making sure that she was all right, right? And she turns around and she says, oh, my God. Where did, where did Fat Boy go? We all call him Fat Boy, because, I mean, you know, you speak as you find. Well, he wasn't in the tent, right? So they're like, where did he go? So they comes out of the tent, well, here he is, right? Stoning. And now he's about, I would say he's about three, four, five metres off this huge, huge 80-pound grizzly bear, right? And he's stoning there, right, Fat Boy, facing this big grizzly bear. And he, he looks to Mrs. Fat Boy and he says... Darling, help, darling, do something, do something, darling. And she looks and she's like, oh, and, the, and her daughter's saying, you bet, what are you going to do? You'll need to do something. And Mrs. Fat Boy says, <laughs> hey, the bear got himself into this trouble. He can get himself out of this trouble. <laughs> I did it, I was awfully funny. So Fat Boy, he appears back, right, about... He only lasted a night. I knew he wouldn't last longer than that. You, you kidding? He likes, he likes his couch. He didn't have a couch to lie on. Oh, no, no, the chocolates tape. So I says, hello there. How was your, how was your um, camping expedition? Did you, did you enjoy it? You enjoy your wee camping trip? And he says, oh, darling, it was intense. Mm. <laughs>